this course doesn't have a strong lecture component in that the design of, of this class is not uh, my giving a 45-minute lecture each week and then you doing work. It's sort of my pointing different things out to you and hopefully you're building from that and finding a whole bunch of things on your own. Um, but I've worked with the Common Core for a long time in a lot of different ways, and I wanted to share some thoughts with you. For some, this might be very old hat, but I think it's worth running through. So unlike the main learning results from years ago, the, the Common Core is not set up as something that you can actually you know go through and check off. I remember starting teaching and being given a... Uh, a checklist of all the learning results and being told to put what learning result went went with what activity in my classes and it was very much a checklist it was you know I, I, I felt I looked so great because I'd have a lesson with E2, A, E3, B and just all these crazy codes that you know in reality was I really teaching all these standards no. What was my work somehow connected to them? Yes, but could my students complete the activity based on my lesson and meet these standards? Not at all. Um, so there's there's a real difference. So what I want to do is I want to run through um, a standard with you, and we're going to work with a writing one. And so we'll start with. Um, Golly, I'm going to move, well, we're, we're going to start right at the very basics, okay, with um, kindergartners are scary, so I'm going to go to second graders, okay? And so here's the standard. It's a writing standard. It's under text type and purposes, right there. And for grade two students, this is what they will be able to do. Write opinion pieces in which they introduce the topic or book they are writing about, state an opinion, supply reasons that support the opinion, use linking words, because also, and, to connect opinion and reasons, and provide a concluding statement or section. Now, you could think, well, we, we can do that in a class period. We'll write a quick opinion piece, name the book, put some linking words in, check, check, um, conclude it. This is the end, and you're good to go. Next one. But it's actually not quite that easy. First off, you have to teach opinion, the difference between opinion and fact. And you have to teach students how to introduce a topic or a book, which means an introduction. And that's not an easy thing, even for second graders, or maybe especially for second graders. You have to help them state an opinion. They have to understand how to do that. In my opinion, I believe that, I think that. They have to supply reasons that support that opinion. So it can't be, you know, I think cows are wonderful because I like grass. That doesn't work. You got to understand how to use linking words. So that takes some practice for kids to understand linking words and why we use those. You have to connect an opinion and reason, and that's not easy. And finally, conclusions. Now, granted, it doesn't have to be a 30 or 50 word conclusion um, with page references and everything, but it's still a conclusion. So this is not an easy thing, and it's not a thing that can be done in a checklist sort of thing. You've got to come up with lessons that teach these components, that help students really understand what they have to do. And then they have to make an attempt at it. And my guess is that their attempt may not be totally successful the first round out. So they've got to go back and work. You'll have to reteach things. They'll have to do more practice on opinion versus fact, maybe, or linking words. And that's not an easy thing for kids. Gosh, that's not an easy thing for high school kids sometimes. And then they do it again. And so it's not until, you know, this this isn't like, what are you doing Thursday in class? Well, we're doing text type and purposes one. Well, no, you're probably not doing it all in one class. All right. So, so that's one thing I really wanted to stress. I know many of you know that, but there are times where, where I, I run into people who just are thinking that 
This is sort of the old style where you can really check things off. I want to run a little older. Um, my career has been with um, high school students and so I, even if you're working with elementary students, I think it's still useful to see what what these little kids will grow up and wind up doing. Um, in some regards, it's very sad. In some regards, it's incredibly challenging. So let's look at writing standards, grades 9 and 10, 9 through 10. All right, these are freshmen. And it's text type and purposes again. I just want to pop up one page and make sure I'm where I want to be. Okay, so in grades 9 and 10, they're going to be writing arguments, informative and explanatory texts, narratives, as well as a lot of other writing. Okay, but let's look at narratives. So narratives meaning, you know, stories, but not necessarily um, stories like Once Upon a Time. We have plenty of personal narratives about our own lives that are incredibly meaningful. Okay, so here's the definition. Write narratives to develop real or imagined experiences or events using effective technique, which, what does that exactly that mean? What does that mean exactly? I don't think a lot of people know. Well-chosen details and well-structured event sequences. So here's what they have to do. And now this is the whole standard, okay? Three A through E. Engage and orient the reader by setting out a problem situation or observation, establishing points of view, introducing a narrator or characters, creating a smooth progression of events. Use narrative technique, dialogue, pacing, description, reflection, multiple plot lines to develop experiences, events, and characters. Variety of techniques to sequence events. Precise words and phrases, telling details, sensory language, vivid pictures of experiences, and provide a conclusion that follows from and reflects on what is experienced, observed, or resolved over the course of the narrative. Honestly, I've been writing for years, and this is a huge challenge. This is a challenge for me. But that's what we're, we're expecting grades 9 and 10 will be doing. What can't happen is, you know, assess a student on 3A and say, okay, well, you've got 3A. Um, you're good, we're going to do something else now. Or, gee, I just saw you, you did a, a short paragraph piece of work, and I'm going to use that to check off 3C. Because this is meant to be one big thing. Now granted, you have to break this up into sequences. You can't just give students this, here's the task, boom, go do this, H have a good day, we'll collect this tomorrow. You've got to chunk this up, teach these individual components, assess them in small pieces, and prep them so that they can do this big thing. But what this is not designed to do is for you or for any ELA teacher, or any teacher for that matter, to say, okay, we're going to assess this paragraph on 3E. Let's just write a conclusion and turn that in, and I can check you off here. It's meant to be one full thing. So that's what I really wanted to stress, is that um, a couple of things. One is that in using these standards, they can't be checklists. It can't be, you know, hey, that's a nice short story you wrote. Boom. Good dialogue. I'm checking this off. Or we can't just hand kids this and say, okay, your homework is write a narrative about a real or imagined experience. And when you come in Monday you get standard 3A through E. We can't do that. Um, we've got to teach components. We've got to use formative and guiding assessments to get kids to be able to build these little steps together. And then we have to develop scoring guides and work with students so that they really understand that here's what you're being asked to do and you've shown you have the basic skills to put this together. So we'll talk a lot more about this, but I wanted to use these two examples, one from grade two and one from 9-10, to just talk a bit about the core and what it looks like. Thanks.